is uh, subsequently. But let's also tell you that President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of a new board and management of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. And this is less than a year after the Loretta Noche led board was appointed. Let's talk about the NDDC for a bit. The purpose of the Niger Delta Development Commission is to offer uh, a lasting solution to what seems to be the socio-economic difficulties of the Niger Delta region and also to facilitate the rapid and sustainable development of the Niger Delta into a region that is economically prosperous, socially stable, ecologically regenerative and politically peaceful. The oil-rich Niger Delta region of Nigeria consists of uh, nine coastal southern states of the country. There's Ondo, Edo, Delta, Bayelsa, Rivers, Imo, Abia, uh, Cross River, and Akwaibom. Now, what is certain is that the Niger Delta provides over 80% of Nigeria's budgetary revenues and about 95% of the nation's foreign exchange earnings. But the corruption in the agency has received cause for questioning. Remember, the former acting MD of the NDDC collapsed during the Reps Committee questioning, uh, which was over some allegation of corruption in the commission. A committee set up by the former President Buhari to inquire into the corruption allegations. There's a new list of the NDDC board, and President Tinubu is expecting the new board and management, management team to ensure a new era of successful administration, uh, which is in line with his renewed hope agenda. Uh, these new appointments, we understand, will take immediate uh, effect. For more on this development, I'm joined by former spokesperson of the Joy Youth Council, Ibilade Kirife. Also joining me is a professor of infrastructure management and industrial security with the University of Kigali, Rwanda, former uh, executive chairperson of African Youth Union Commission, the youth arm of the African Union, Professor Carl Oshodi Sibo. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. Let us begin uh, by identifying for a bit, uh, for a moment, what has happened within this commission in the past decades. The NDDC is a federal government agency you know, that was established by former President Obasanjo in 2000. Its sole mandate is to, you know, somehow develop the oil-rich Niger Delta region. Would you say that um, with some six trillion naira allocated in the past 19 years, that this commission has succeeded in executing that mandate? Let me begin with you, Professor Isibo. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please go ahead. I just want to be good. Uh, well, um, it's uh, to be frank with you, so far, uh, in terms of uh, the resources that have got into the NDDC uh, with relation to the allocation, um, meaningful development has not been up to 20%. Uh, whether you are talking about uh, Fiscal infrastructure or uh, industrializing the region. Uh, one of the mandates of uh, the NDDC is to cushion the effects and ameliorate the 
poverty rates of the region, which means that uh, they have a mandate to accelerate uh, economic activities, to accelerate capacity building, and to also uh, integrate the region. Uh, so far, commensurately, uh, whether it is uh, project facilitation, whether it is um, uh, investment in uh, infrastructure, has been a little bit, uh, you know, uh, debatable. The reason is that um, ordinarily institutions as uh, NDDC uh, having invested in, I would not say completely rule out the fact that uh, NDDC has not invested in infrastructure, but the management and the security of this infrastructure has not been a follow-up policy approach of, uh, of the commission. Uh, we believe that uh, with the money, with the amount of uh, allocation allotted to uh, uh, I would say development of the region. Uh, I, I, I do not know, uh, but uh, from my findings, the NDDC has not been able to uh, b bring to bear uh, some of the practical effects of the impact of these allocated resources for the development of the region. So I would say um, they may have a, they have achieved some level of successes, mm. but the successes have not really translated to the economic impact on the life of the people. I think that's uh, that's my opinion. Mr. Ekerefi, one of the core mandates of the commission is to train and educate young people of the Niger Delta in order to curb hostilities and militancy while also developing some key infrastructures to promote diversification and productivity. You represent a youth uh, organization in that region. How well has it fared since 2000. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, to be very frank with you, uh, the NDBC uh, was born out of uh, the agitations of young people from the Niger Delta region, most especially from the Joy Extraction, because of the uh, marginalization and the deprivation that the region has suffered you know, since uh, the discovery of uh, uh, oil in commercial quantity at Oluidun, you know, and uh, the former president, you know, uh, President Olusegun of Batenjo, knowing the strategic importance of the Niger Delta region, established the Niger Delta Development Commission to address critical infrastructure of the region and also attend to the issues which uh, uh, cause the agitations in the Niger Delta region uh, with a view of addressing them at long. And youth played a very significant role in that struggle. And uh, to be very frank, uh, uh, without uh, saying that uh, successive administration has not done very well, I think that uh, those persons who have been saddled with the responsibility to addressing the issues which led to the agitation that uh, 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 brought the establishment of the NDDC has not really done very well. Mm -hmm. And this is because politics has played a very key role you know, in the management of the Niger Data Development Commission. And so the core mandate of uh, addressing those fundamental issues are unable to be addressed. What are the issues that the youth of the Niger Delta region are aiming for? It's about job creating, job opportunities for the people, human capacity building, infrastructure. These are the only things that can take the youth of this region, of the state, and of kind. But till I speak with you, after six trillion naira has been put in into the Niger Delta Development Commission, we cannot say that uh, that money has been able to impact on the life and the livelihood. Of Talking the about the money, Mr. Ikerefe, an audit of the commission was carried out by the previous administration. And I remember the Attorney General saying that criminal investigations and recovery of um, improperly used funds will be initiated. How important is this for the success of the new NDDC board? As far as I'm concerned, there has never been any political will. It was just a melodrama, you know, because 
a large sum of money was allocated for the forensic forensic audit committee to carry out its work, yeah, its assignment. And over two years, that exercise was carried out, and which further led to a series of agitations for the appointment of a substantial board. And up to this moment, that document has been swept under the carpet, and nothing is being done. There are billions of naira have gone down the drain, and nobody can even account for it. And so this uh, current managing director and his team has a big role to play in terms of going back into that document so that those persons who are found culpable, those persons who have used the common resources of the Ninja Delta people for their own personal pockets can be brought to proof. Because without accountability, the NDDC cannot achieve anything significantly. All right. People who have used let me just bring the prof in uh, into th this mix. Um, the the poverty it is it is fact that the poverty and deprivation of the people of the region you know don't in any way match its oil producing status. Uh, so, um, since two thousand and seven, for instance, about um, two former governors of states in the region have been convicted of money laundering. There are you, you know some other former governors that are under criminal investigations. How important is this accountability? is talking about is this something that the new board must look into or they can just look away well um uh, I, I think uh, a serious uh, government we ensure that uh, they institute um a practical uh, institution that would check and balance every sector of uh, the of the government uh, what we, what I think, uh, the new leadership or the new regime will do is to look at ways of uh, developing innovative and practical solutions that will curb some of these excesses, uh, to strengthen these um, uh, financial uh, institutions or perhaps uh, the uh, um, coordinators of these bodies. Uh, for instance. Um, I would say the, the institutions that monitors and ensure that uh, graft and corruption is curbed should be strengthened. Uh, investment, critical investment should be done. Uh, these critical investments are what I call soft infrastructure. What is needed to ensure that uh, there is a proper regulation of the conduct of uh, uh, the public officers in terms of uh, the utilization of these resources. Are we not going to say that uh, some of these uh, uh, resources that is accrued, for instance, say uh, the state government you have said have been, you know, um, purportedly, because uh, we, we are not yet sure of the conviction, uh, purportedly convicted of this uh, uh, corrupt corruption. What is the government, what is this institution doing to make these, uh, to curb these excesses? Because why it is, uh, it is a no phenomenon that Corruption is uh, rearing its ugly head in various institutions in Nigeria. We, on our part, we as the government, we as a civil society, we as private sector, need to work uh, yeah, even more closely in developing strategies and approaches to curb these corrupt tendencies. These corrupt tendencies might not make justice to flow, might prevent equity from you know, having its own forbearance. So what we need to do is to look at institutional restructuring. Once institutions are restructured, institutions will be enabled to do and perform its duties, uh, you know, legitimately without interference. And if this interference, uh, if this non-interference, it's uh, what the uh, regime is going to invest in, we will now begin to see um, proper audits of various institutional profile, right. whether it is accounting profile, mm. it is a governance profile, and all of that. So it will have its own uh, benchmark to measure development at every stage. So um, the, the new members of this board are expected to resume immediately. But as we speak, Mr. Ikerife, there's protest on the streets of Calabar in Cross River State over the appointment of one Asu Okang. According to them, uh, he's a prominent member of the PDP and is from the non-oil producing part of the state. Uh, it, does it seem like there is 
trouble even before they commence their assignment because we are hearing of a similar protest also in Ondo State. Uh, well, the act that establishes the NDC is very clear. Uh, first, uh, anybody who is appointed into uh, NDC management board it comes from an oil producing area. But beyond that, uh, what is more important is uh, the individual who has been appointed into that office to have uh, the interest of the region at heart. In several locations, we have seen people who are from oil producing communities and they go there and they flop. You know, so it's about the interest of the region. The person who has been appointed, does he have the capacity to do the work? Is this somebody who has been part and parcel of the Niger Delta struggle? Does he understand the issues of governance and development in the region? Is this somebody who is known to stakeholders in this region? And that is why initially when I said, when I, when I made my, my remarks, I said that part of the problems why the Niger Delta Development Commission has not been able to meet up to the expectations of the Niger Delta people because politicians have been appointed into those offices. That of the, the, the commission was specifically put in place to address issues of uh, development and governance in this region. But how so important, Mr. Important. Uh, Ikerefe, is, is a substantial yes. support back from home for whoever is representing the state on the board? Uh, does that in any way affect his performance? Hello, sir. I didn't get you. I'm asking the importance of the, represent, the, the state representative, the importance of getting a substantial support back at home. Well, that is why I said that, number one, what were the criteria upon appointing that person? You know, that is why the appointment of any official in the Niger Delta Development Commission should be based on recommendation from critical stakeholders of the Niger Delta struggle. What we have seen is political patrimony. People who do not have any reason to be in the commission in the first place are the people who have been given this appointment. And so when they go there, instead of addressing the issues that affect the Niger Delta people, they rather go there to satisfy the, the, the interests of those persons who have appointed them into that office. You know, that is the challenge we are having. And so uh, I must use this opportunity to first uh, commend the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Tinubu, for at least uh, appointing a substantive board of the Niger Delta Development Commission as quickly as possible. We want to believe that this board, under the management of uh, Dr. Samuel Lumbuku, you know, will lead the ground running. That is what we want. What the people of this region want is development. And too much of grammar and talks, the protests and the agitations that we have had over the years has not significantly turned around the socioeconomic challenges of the Niger Delta people. Let us begin to give them timeline upon when they will deliver. There are also issues of budgeting. NDDC, as I speak with you, as, in fact, they are not running on the current 2020 uh, 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 budget, pro, uh, pro, uh, budget. All right. There are backlogs. There are backlogs. So, the Niger Delta Development Commission under Samuel Mbuku should, mm -hmm. as a matter of urgency, look at the budgetary provisions of the NDDC and I hear you, Mr. Kerefe. We have to go now. Let me just get your closing remarks, Professor Isibo. Uh, the images of the former NDDC acting MD fainting during an investigative hearing at the National Assembly is still very fresh on the mind of many Nigerians. Uh, how do we create a system that is not so, you know, prone to corruption, you know, and it's such that we are not even fighting how much money they have stolen, but it becomes practically impossible for them to steal the money in the first place. Well, uh, you, you've asked me uh, so many questions since zipped in one. Uh, the, we, what if, as a serious people and a serious nation, like I said, we need to build a strong institution. And building these strong institutions, stakeholders need to be involved whether it is government, the communities, the civil society, the private sector, we must come together, particularly the Niger Delta, which is my concern, which is my region. Uh, what I think, uh, my advice is that uh, the drama 
that uh, ensued, you know, during the corruption, the auditing of the NDDC uh, account or NDDC activity so far uh, was very dramatic. We don't need such to, to repeat itself. So I believe that this new management we own up to the responsibility of first addressing the needs of the people, not their personal needs. They must understand the mandate of which they were, they were constituted. They must also work together in order to deliver in terms of the dividend of the Niger Delta people, uh, such as uh, making the Niger Delta region a, a truly industrialized you know, uh, region. Because uh, if we have petrochemicals everywhere, we should, uh, by the resources we have, mm -hmm. would have uh, been industrialized thus far. But it's still not too late. What I believe we can do is that for all stakeholders to, you know, come together, uh, it doesn't matter as long as you are from the region, whether you are from the oil producing community, you are from the transit community, you are from the non oil producing community. The resources, you know, the impact of this, uh, of this, uh, of this, of the NDDC is going to be felt by all because the, the critical infrastructure investment in the area is going to be utilized or going to be used by those from the uh, oil-bearing communities and the non-oil-bearing communities. So I am imploring the stakeholders, every stakeholder, the government, the, the civil society, the private sector, the multinational oil cooperation, the communities, we must all work together in synergy, in addition with the board. The board must open up space for new innovations, new approaches, right. new development strategies to come in to make the region a truly industrialized and economic region. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. For my spokesperson, Ajo Youth Council, Lebilade Ikirife. I'm also, uh, I've also spoken with Professor of Infrastructure Management and Industrial Security, University of Kigali in Rwanda. For my executive chairperson, African Youth Union Commission, Professor Carl Sahari Ushudi Sibo. Thank you for joining us on the program this evening. And that's the show. You can watch a repeat broadcast at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifamu Kuntoye. You have a great time.